sell it to school. So the first thing you got to do is build your audience. So let's talk about audience for a second. There's a lot of different ways of getting audience. Audience can be through, what's a really cheap way to get an audience? Word of mouth. Word of mouth? That's right. Social media. Social media and word of mouth kind of interlinked now, right? I would still say as a marketer that actual word of mouth, that is person to person contact and maybe showing the app, showing them also this person, I'm doing this, uh, that's probably going to be 60% of what, how you get your people. Social media can help re emphasize that word of mouth. Why are people on social media? To expand, to promote something virally. Why do you go on social media? Is anyone willing to admit this? Find out what's happening in your network. All right, it's also a great segue to the company I'm working on right now, which is Hello. Hello is a social media company, you media over social. One of the things that we figured out is that people are on social media primarily to make themselves feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. It's a visceral little hit to get. A little endorphin rush when someone likes your photo about on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And that's why we do it more and more. And especially if it's a selfie, I think you get a double hit if it's a selfie, right? So the personal, what I'm after is that the personal with social media is what's going to help you spread the word more. If you're just pumping out something virally on social media without that personal connection, you're going to miss you're going to get your audience, but you're not going to get the sale. You're not going to get the conversion to someone who wants to actually use it. So the purpose of marketing is to get an audience in order to make a sale. And in order to make a sale over social media, you must have a personal and emotional connection. If you can't figure that out within social media, wait and, and do something else on that marketing list. There's so much to do. There's so much to do. How else can we get uh, word of mouth or awareness? Bring her. Partnering. I'm sorry? Partnering. Partnering with a company, a brick and mortar store, a website, a community. That's right. What about an Emerald's case where they want to do something to help people clean up the city? So the idea is that you see. Something needs to be cleaned up, you keep the garbage, you tag it, you put, you put it out to the community, you get emeralds for doing this, right? you get memorials for doing this, and then you clean it up, you send in a video to like a proof that you've cleaned up. This guy's before he's spoken to emeralds a couple of times today at the mentor table. So he's using his word of mouth marketing in order to get it. So now we're all very aware of emeralds. So how do you how do you say to the people, they're gonna get a little hit? Because they're going to get rewarded to do it, and I think that's I think that's really strong. So who would be a good partner for Emeralds besides the city? Environmental groups. Environmental groups. Right. Environmental groups, not for profits, private.
building that to pass about the capital. People get actually monetary rewards for being able to say how awesome who's going to provide the money in the brand giving organization. We were also thinking, go big, thanks. Who you're going to make feel good 
by buying your product, how are you going to make it the same? Are there any questions so far? Comments? Uh, I was just going to say. We'll run back out.
when you put your app on the App Store, uh, that's part of your permissioning. You're going to ask to send them geofenced messaging once they've downloaded your app. This is this is a, this is called hyper local marketing, um, and uh, it's a little beyond the scope of what we're talking about today, but it is very effective. Once someone downloads their app, they're going to say, "You've done this before." Uh, can we access all your friends or your relatives? Yes, I just want to see the information. Uh, can we send you messages if you walk into our geographic area? Yes, so a, please, just yes, 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 yes. Just put it in my phone. So all of those upfront permissions are great. And believe it or not, uh, I have seen data on this. 97% uh, of people are saying yes, yes, and they're saying yes to location as well. I'm not one of them. And the problem with me in the tech bubble is that we're so aware of what people are doing. I never let anyone see the location on my phone. I don't want any messages. I don't want the geofence messages. I want people to buy low beacons from Fresh Digital, which is one of my clients, but I don't actually want to use them. But I'm not the client. You know, that, that comes in right into a whole other area. There's the whole idea of it's all on YouTube. Uh, but adoption, who's, who's actually going to be using this? You've got to remember, and this is important, who is going to use your product or your app? And when I see an app is an actual business, so the tends to get sidelined out, like, oh, you're just putting up an app. But an app is a whole business. An app has operations behind it. An app has permissions coming from the app store. And for those of you who don't know this, and it doesn't seem like it matches marketing, but it does, the App Store has to give you permission for all kinds of stuff for an update. You say you've got this really cool update and you talk to your family partner, who's the marketer, sales, business development person, and they go crazy. They're like, we're going to do this cool update. We want to promote it. I want to put this into my 10 point marketing plan. I want to put out a press release. I want to do this, and all this kind of stuff. And they get it all ready to go and they work all night. And the next day, the person in charge of the relationship with the App Store says, oh, we don't, we don't know whether it's accepted yet. We don't have a date. We don't have a deadline. We don't have anything. We don't even know. So be aware of what's happening with your app store and your distribution mechanism <coughs> on the technical side before you put these marketing plans into place because sometimes it's six weeks, sometimes it's six months. You could be in talks about it for a long time when certain things happen with your app in the app store. And it does affect Marketing. So if that's the case, you're going to go back to your old checklist and start working on it. And ten, ten things happening at once, all the time. And sales is gone. And exactly to your point, uh, I, I'm in the competition at the library, and when I was developing the product I wanted to do, I got one person to call me back as a commercial real estate agent that helped me understand. You know what? I'm a better off putting it in a hotel. That trying to go scandal and picking a direction. And, and my encouragement is if you go too deep in one aspect of your product, the world will have shifted 50 degrees by the time you try to market it. If you're not talking to everybody, getting all their input, because it all works together. It's all like you, uh, someone said, we've all got to get to the finish line at the same time, we've all got to get to the goal line at the same time. Pick whatever sports analogy you need to pick depending on who you're talking to, but all the right, all these things need to get across the finish line at the same time, often, um, before it doesn't work. I want to talk about business development a little bit, to talk a bit about partnerships, and I don't want there to be any confusion. Business development meetings are easier to get. Business development meetings can take up all of your time, but business development meetings are, we're going to create a strategic partnership, we're going to sign a co-selling agreement. You'll get into this stuff as you go on with your talk. Beware of your business development meeting. Because if you want people to adopt your app or sign up to your business, you want them to use whatever it is that you're all working on, those people are not going to be sold by your business development meeting. It's just taken an hour and a half of your precious time and a couple of your interns. Switch, switch it around. Take the harder meeting. Go for the sales meeting. And if you have, you know, in your office, you're saying we're taking here's our business development meetings, here's our sales meetings, and here's our investor meetings. And make sure that sales meetings is the most. And that means you're going in, you're finding out what the objection is for people for adopting that or distributing your app. 
finding out more your product, or whatever it is, and finding out what it is. And we're covering a lot because we could be B to C here, we could be B to B. This is, of course, after you figured out where your business is positioned and how you're going to sell it. This is all after that spot. But you need to have, you need to be selling. And if you need to put marketing meetings up there, you don't want to call it selling, you can, you can do that too. But don't, don't, your, your time is so precious, try not to get sucked in other business development. Um, is there anyone here working on something that would be considered just a straight app? I feel like Emeralds is an app, but it's also a movement. Yes? Uh, sure, I'm working on something around healthy behavior change to leveraging like, healthy actionable tips to people through notifications and having them hang on it. Okay, what kind of notifications? Uh, just like tips, essentially. Like SMS, or are you going to well, do messaging like, through the... Through a notification. Through like a notification. notification. So do they need to download an app at yeah. some point for this, to, for this to take place? Yeah. Okay. So what are your initial thoughts on how you're going to get people to actually adopt this? Um, find people who are motivated to change their behavior, like improve their diet exercise. Like people who already have this type of initiative. Great. Do you know where they're going to meet? Um, there are um, <coughs> like forums, uh, blogs, and gyms, like physically gyms. Uh, people who go to certain restaurants around the city. So, so the, the wellness yeah. stream. Yeah. Yeah. You might even want to go further into that, like you know, the health food store wellness stream for for something like that. And I think a partnership is obviously to start off with yeah. is a thing because. I think, I think people are going to get a personal hit from doing what the notification says, and especially if it's an obvious one, like go to sleep, yeah. something like that. You're going to get that good, good hit. Um, but yeah, you've got to watch your, you've got to watch your distribution and your, and your verbal and how you can get adoption there. I think we, a lot of people we were talking about in the mentor's table earlier were a little worried about uh, app fatigue. Downloading app and then the apps are going to be the strongest. Are we going to be the ones that go out together as an umbrella or find an app that already exists or a business that already exists and make yours a, a better mousetrap on them and include that business? So call them and say, I've got, a, I've got an additional thing for you. They're not going to have the bandwidth to execute it. Let's do a full venture and we'll go out that way. Anyone else? Uh, 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 Dave here. Uh, that allows you to add. Right. Okay, so what are your initial thoughts about how you thought people would adopt it? Uh, I was going to start with word of mouth as a, a test uh, uh, environment to see how many people actually use the app and, and, and get information on it. <coughs> but as a broader, um, I haven't even thought further about uh, how to get a broader spectrum of people to um, start using that. Okay. Um, Interesting. And you know, there's a whole industry of just dating apps, right? There's like a whole realm of information that you can use. Uh, and you know, that, that's a good additional to business, I think, for the Facebooks, for the Instagrams, for the Snapchats, um, and for whatever the next generation of those things is going to be. We shall see who wins that game. Uh, but I, I would think that's a great way to get in without having, the less you can build, the better. Right? So if you can update someone else's existing something, if you can white label someone else's existing something, uh, especially at the very early stage, at the idea stage, always, always better. Even if you don't own the proprietary technology, again, your investor meetings are different from your sales meetings. So your job is to get people sold into your app and get it out there as fast as humanly possible. I mean, I'm not, how many have a lot of engineers and developers in the room? Who's an engineer and developer? So you guys are sort of comfortable building stuff from scratch. But if you're not one of those people and you want to get something out there quickly, um, then you, I think you definitely want to see if there's an existing or somewhat like technology or platform that you can white label and use to get your product out there. Because now we're talking about a business, not just an app. Yes? You seem like you. What are you working on? Me? Yes, you. Oh. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm working with a nonprofit that connects technologists with public nonprofits. Oh, so okay. It's a service, but not an app. Okay. That's right. So, what do you, what is, I mean, 
why those are the gaps? Are we looking for technologists? Um, we actually, we are a partner on the center floor. Okay. Yeah, so we're just there to um, connect with um, people who have technologies or who are technologies. Okay. You brought up one of my, my last points, which is that so much of this space is getting up and making pitches. We had a couple people making pitches today. Um, you need to be able to be heard, and I'm not talking about accent. Again, I am kind of brutal Canadian accent. Um, but if you feel, if the audience feels like they can't hear you, it's harder, right? And the idea of sales is to make it easy for people to adopt, and that means adopting you and wanting to work with you and working with your organization and making your organization over a different organization. So make sure, it's a personal pet peeve of mine, especially in this sector, make sure you can be heard. Mike, no Mike. If you uh, are English as a second language, make sure that you're speaking slower. I, it's not an accent thing, it's an enunciation thing. And if you remember that if you are speaking English, that there's other people who are trying to listen to you where English is not their first language, especially in New York. So please slow it down and let yourself be heard and practice your pitch. It's, it's such a cliche now, but practice it at home, practice it in front of the mirror, uh, and practice it from across the room and make sure people I think we're pretty close to time. Are there any other questions? This point? Okay. Um, again, my name is Mary Vermont. Uh, my, my hours are up on O hours. Um, and now that we're in this stage and you're putting your applications together, it's a great time to call us for the marketing and business development end and make sure that that part is taken care of as part of your competition application. Um, and generally, just, you know, we have hours up there, so uh, please do sign up. I'm happy to talk to anyone at any time. Um, and as mentors, our job is to bring in other people, connect you. Um, if you need a UX person, if you need to talk to another engineer, um, if you need to talk to someone in a different city even, um, or find that right labeling partner, we're, we're here to help you with that. So please sign in and check out below.